But Parkinson's disease is not just a disease of dopamine. And this is really sort of one fundamental aspect of Parkinson's disease that most people did not learn in training. When I was in training, people just talk about motor symptoms. We give dopamine agonists and blah, blah, blah. And guess what? This is what, what makes these people's lives miserable. What makes their lives miserable is usually the non-motor symptoms. So this slide shows you the evolution of the whole complete picture of what you see in Parkinson's disease. And yes, you do lose dopamine neurons, and this explains REM behavior disorder. It explains the classical motor features of Parkinson's disease. But guess what? They lose other neurons as well. If you work with a Parkinson's disease population, you realize there's a high prevalence of major depression because they've lost noradrenergic neurons. There's a high prevalence eventually, if they live long enough, of cognitive impairment due to the loss of cholinergic neurons. And for what we're going to be talking about here, if you look at stage number two, they start to lose the dorsal and caudate raphe neurons, which make serotonin. So you're thinking, well, what is serotonin? have to do with psychosis. Psychosis is dopamine, right? Well, it's not so simple. For one thing, many of you know that a model for schizophrenia actually involves glutamate, right? We give people things like PCP, or they take it themselves from the guy behind the 7-Eleven, and they get psychotic. So glutamate drugs can make you psychotic. I could probably make you psychotic if I gave you all enough anticholinergics. You probably would be delirious too. So there are many ways to cause the positive symptoms of psychosis. The serotonin pathway is one of them. And the reason this is relevant to the whole discussion here is what happens when you start to lose your serotonergic neurons. Those postsynaptic receptors are now starved for serotonin, and as a consequence, they start to upregulate and become super sensitive. And specifically, it's the serotonin 2A receptors which undergo this process. And here you can see some imaging studies of people with Parkinson's disease, with and without visual hallucinations, with much greater serotonin 2A binding associated with having visual hallucinations. You're like, okay, this is fine, nice association. I don't quite get the pathophysiology aspect. So, as many of you know, of course, what we used to call the mesolimbic pathway, but now we're going to say maybe it's more appropriately in the associative part of the striatum, is associated with the positive symptoms of psychosis, too much dopamine. But there is another way to make people psychotic, and this has to do with overstimulation of serotonin 2A receptors. So way back in 1938, let's take a journey. Way back in 1938, there was a very famous chemist by the name of Albert Hoffman. Does anybody know who Albert Hoffman is? He invented that little thing that's down on the lower right, LSD. LSD causes a form of psychosis with predominantly actually visual effects as opposed to what we see in schizophrenia, predominantly visual effects, and it is a potent serotonin 2A agonist. So the patients with Parkinson's disease psychosis, it's a consequence of upregulation and supersensitivity of their serotonin 2A receptors, early on actually get predominantly visual symptoms. Now later on, they may also get delusions as well, and over time they may lose insight. But early on, it's often a predominantly visual problem, and it mimics very much like you might get with the classical hallucinogens like LSD.